Hi family and welcome to Wisdom for Life. My name is Brittany and I'm so excited to be joining you today. We know that the Word of God promises that if we seek God's kingdom first, all the rest will follow. But how do we practically apply that to our lives? Well, in this series, Dad is going to show us exactly what it means to seek God's kingdom first. Let's enjoy this together. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Now, we have been spending a lot of time talking about kingdom first. And I want to change gear slightly. Uh, we're going to continue along that theme. So you could say this is Kingdom First, Volume 2. Because I really believe that if we're going to talk about having a relationship with God, it means that He comes first in our lives. We, he is first priority. And I want to talk about, uh, the message will be entitled, The Household of Faith. So that's the subtitle. But there is a sub-subtitle, and the sub-subtitle is relevant for today, and I'm sure it'll be relevant for the rest of time because it's been relevant in the past, but really for us today as a church, when we faced such a, a horrendous pandemic last year, and not only the disease that caused so much destruction and heartache and pain for so many people, uh, the health issues involved, not only that, also the emotional issues that come as a result of that. I heard so many people had committed suicide because of the, the lockdowns and the loss of income and the loss of finances, people losing years of investments in a company and that company being wiped out because of it. And so we saw so much destruction happening during the year of 2020. And uh, even if you're listening to this message many years from now, I'm talking right now in the year of 2021, the Lord gave us a word that we can expect that He would move in terms of relationship, in, in places of restoration, and also reconciliation. These are the three R's that we want to concentrate on as the church, because I recognize that no matter what the enemy has stolen, no matter what the enemy has stolen, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. The Word of God is clear. If God is for you, who can be against you? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. The Scriptures are full of these things, these promises, these covenant promises. And so if we wanted to see that manifesting in our lives, we need to press into it by faith. That's the key. That we need to understand that. So often people say, I wonder why God hasn't done anything. He did everything on the cross. He paid for your salvation in full. But not only did He pay for your salvation in full, He's also paid for your healing, your deliverance, your provision, your protection, everything you could want, need, or desire. He's blessed you with every spiritual blessing. He's given you all things pertaining to life and godliness. So how do I see it manifesting in my life? By faith. And we're going to have a look at that in a number of different ways because I want you to experience Everything that God has for you. Yeah, we see in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. This is God speaking. He says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you. That I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Isn't that interesting? The choice is not up to God. It's not like God just decides He's going to bless this person, but not bless that person. It's not like God says, shame, they've cried long enough, let me pay their bills. You haven't cried long enough, I can't pay your bill right now. That's not the God that we serve. That wouldn't be love. Love desires the best for you. Love wants to see you whole. Love wants to see you saved. God so loved the world that He gave His Son that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. That's the God that we serve. That's His character. And so if we see death and destruction and 
pain and sorrow and things like this. Notice he says here, I'm calling heaven and earth as witnesses. God is setting his word and he is putting himself in a place where he is going to obligate himself. But notice the obligation is placed in your hands, my hands. He says here, I lay before you life and death. There are two options. How many recognize that in this world, there is a God of this world, as Paul calls him, and that is Satan. He is causing death and destruction. Jesus said it's the thief in John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. I came that you may have life and have that life more abundantly. So what is God's desire for you? Life. But he's also pointing out that there is this aspect of the enemy, death. And so when you confront it, when you come across it, we shouldn't be shocked. That's why when Jesus said that in this world you will have tribulation. But he said, but be of good cheer. Notice he didn't say, listen, I've realized the world has tribulation. Don't worry, I'll keep it out your way. He said, you're going to have tribulation. Why? Because at this moment, the world has been controlled by Satan. And so there are problems and calamities that happen all around us. But thank God for the Word of God where it says, Though a thousand fall by my side, ten thousand by my right hand, it will not come near me. I thought I'd get a bigger amen from that. How do you say amen to that? Why? Because he said that he would look after you. And so in this world, there's going to be tribulation, but Jesus said, be of good cheer. Why? I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. I have. And that means it's already dealt with. So he's giving us the option. He says, yeah, you've got to recognize that while you're alive on this planet, there are going to be situations which will confront you, and it'll be your choice, life or death. Therefore choose life that you and your descendants may live. Notice, life is a choice. It doesn't happen automatically. Now remember the Word of God says in Proverbs that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now that's a whole other message. I'm not going to go down that road now for time's sake. But what I'm making the point now is that whether I live or die, notice he says here that you and your descendants may live. There's a generational promise here, but it begins with you. It begins with me. Say it now. Say, it begins with me. Say this, the choice is mine. Can you see that? So if it is that important, I lay before you life and death, blessing and cursing. It is your choice whether you live or whether you have the blessing. I have to make that choice. So if I have to make that choice, I better know how to make the choice. Come on, Adam, you know for a fact that when I first got saved, I didn't know how to do any of this faith stuff. It was something that we had to learn. We had to grow into. And notice he says in verse 20, that, well, let's read verse 19 again. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Yeah, the, condition, yeah, yeah, the blessing continues that you may love the Lord your God. Everybody say relationship. That you may obey His voice. That you may cling to Him. For He is your life and the length of your days. He is your life and the length of your days. So if I'm going to choose life, it's going to be by first choosing God. Kingdom first. Hello. That you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give them. Notice, family God. It begins with your relationship with God. If we want to experience life, it's for a reason. It's for a purpose. We don't have life. We, in other words, we don't choose to be a Christian, serve God, so that we can get life. And then when we have life, we don't need Him anymore. No, He's not a shop that you go and get things from. Can I get a bigger amen? No, it begins with a relationship with Him. 
If I'm going to see the promises of God come to pass in my life, if I want everything pertaining to the blessing, what's under that blessing? You go read through Deuteronomy 28 that talks about you being in good health. It means talks about being uh, fruitful in terms of children. Barrenness will not be amongst you. It talks about success in your businesses and in your finances. It talks about protection. All these are promises, but they're there for a reason. They're there because you're serving God. In other words, it begins with a relationship with God. It's not just so that I can have my house paid or get my car, that new car that I want. No, there's a purpose behind it. And we've got to understand that if we want to see the blessing in life, it begins with the person of life, God Himself. And that's why when Jesus said in Luke 12, verse 31, Seek the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. Do not fear, little flock. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Notice, it's your Father's pleasure. Not just God out there. He's not an impersonal God. He is your heavenly Father. Everybody say relationship. And in that relationship, He wants to give you the kingdom. But notice Jesus said, seek the kingdom of God. Matthew 6.33 says, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. Now you understand why I'm saying this is kind of volume two, because if I want to see my relationship with God develop, it begins with being interested in what He's interested in first. If I love somebody, I love what they're interested in. I want to be where they are. I want to do what they do. That's where a lot of people misunderstand love. They, they love the person, but really it's not really love as we know love, God love, that compassionate love, that uncompromising love, that unconditional love, usually it is, begins with lust. And because I like the way the person looks or you, they like their body or they like, uh, the, you know, their handsome or prettiness. And then when they get the person to kind of have interest, and then they try and change the person to become somebody different because this is how I live my life, but I, I want you, I want your body and all, but now this is how we're going to do it. That's not love. That is not love. See, family God, when God created you, He created you a certain way. He created you the way you should be. Now, we know through sin, some of that is corrupted. But the real who you are, the way you think, the way you move, the way you act, the way you live, that is born of God, created in the image of God, that very person that you are, God has all those gifts and all those talents and all those abilities that He placed in you. It's for a specific purpose. Don't try and be somebody else. And certainly don't allow someone else to change you to be someone else. Be who God called you to be. Be everything He called you to be. And so if I love somebody, I want to find out what their passions are. See, I love what Janine loves. I love her passion. There are some things that I may have never, ever had an interest in. But because she did, I grew to love that because I wanted the relationship with her. You getting this? So family of God, if we want to see our relationship with God improve, we want to get involved with the things He's passionate about. I want to be part of His kingdom. What, what drives God? What is His what, what, when you talk about the compassion of Jesus, what does that look like? Because I want that in me. I want to see through the eyes of Jesus. When I look at you, I want to see who Jesus sees. I want to see, I want to respond the way he would have responded if he looked at you. Come on, how many you say amen to that? How many you want that kind of relationship with God? And he goes on, let's go and have a look at Psalm 118, verse 17. If we're talking about life and death, choosing life, yeah, the psalmist says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Now, family of God, this is a great scripture. This is something that Janine had to hook into. She said that when she was lying in the hospital, this, is a, this, will, this will help encourage a lot of people. She cannot even remember the first few days in ICU, she can't. It, it's blanked from her memory, and that's how serious this thing was. But as I stood in intercession, and I prayed, 
and I spoke the word of God. I realized just like Jesus, remember when then Saturion came and said, my servant is lying at home sick? Jesus said, take me to him. See, he, he, that's always Jesus. We've got to fix it. And so the centurion said, no, no, hang on, hang on. Uh, I, I, I'm not worthy for you to come into my house. But I'm a man under authority. And if I speak, my servants listen. All you have to do is say the word, my servant will be healed. And Jesus marveled. He said, I have not seen such faith in all of Israel. And he said, go home. Your oh, servants healed this hour. And I said, Jesus, I can do that. You said I'll do the same works and greater. I don't have to be with my wife. That's, that's inter- that, that servant at home, we don't even know if he was a believer or not. How much did he hear about, the, did, G- did he hear Jesus speak? No. Did he feel Jesus' hand on him? No, Jesus wasn't even in the room. But based on the word. See, I didn't have to be with Janine. I just had to speak the word. And Jesus said, I do the same works he did and greater. And he's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he said, at the end of the day, he's just saying what the Father said. And it's the Father in him who does the work. So the Father did the work at the servant's house, even though Jesus was kilometers away. And so I could do that. I spoke the word. And I said what Jesus said. I didn't say what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling and all the fear and the worries and the concerns. I chose to speak God's word. And that word ignited in Janine. And she said, as she was lying there, all she could do, as she felt herself slipping and coming and slipping and coming back, slipping and coming back, she just kept saying, I will not die but live and declare the works of God. I will not die but live and declare the works of God. Family of God, that is the foundation. I've spoken to uh, uh, somebody recently, I don't have, I didn't ask them if I have permission to tell you, so I'll just keep it uh, anonymous for now. But this person is a man of God, and he has, I, I just personally, I saw five posts of people that he knew in his circle, past than that, that had passed away. And he phoned to speak to me, and then Janine was there. I let him speak to him, him speak to her. And he just started rejoicing and praising God and praising God and praising God and praising God because he said he watched how one after the other, these people who got sick, how he saw, he spoke to them personally, how they said, I don't want to go on. I'm finished. I'm going now. I'm leaving. And he said, you've got to fight. You've got to fight. He said, I don't feel like fighting anymore. And he said he saw that over and over and over again. And yeah, he could not, he, he could not thank Janine enough. He said, thank you for fighting. Thank you for fighting. Thank you for fighting. Because that's what it is. It's making that decision for life. And she said, I will not die but live. Now, I want you to notice this. The promise is not just I will not die but live. It is to declare the works of the Lord. Come on, family. You're getting a hold of this? In other words, God, when He moves in your life, there's purpose behind it. One thing that I have noticed, if someone has purpose, it's very difficult to take him down. If you know your call, I'm here for the call of God. I, 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 even, I, I said it so the enemy would hear it. I don't try and twist God's arm. I know where he stands. I know his will and desire. I said it. I said it loud so the enemy could hear it. When God called Janine and me to come plant this church, he called us as a team. If I could have done it on my own, I would have been Paul, unmarried, come here, do the work. Like Paul never got married. Amen. Paul of the Bible. So I could have done the same. No, we're together. We're a team. And we will live out the fullness of our days to complete our assignment. The devil cannot kill us. We need to make that choice. Come on, you're getting a hold of this? And so notice it says to declare the works of the Lord. That's the key, family. We need to be here with a purpose in mind. If we're going to go forward as a church, even though we may be in lockdown, even though we may not have been able to meet in our buildings, we can still go forward with purpose. Come on, say amen. Notice Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Underline those who diligently seek him. 
God is a rewarder. That's the promise. Why, how come I haven't seen it? There's the key. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. That's the relationship. It's being with God. God, I'm here for you. I'm here for your purpose. I'm always in your presence. I want to hear your word. I want to hear your direction. I want your heart. And when we respond like that, God says, I'll reward you with whatever you want. But notice, it's by faith. Without faith, it's not going to happen. That's why it says in Hebrews 11 verse 1, that faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And so when you have this hope and this desire, it's, your faith is what gives it substance. How many of you have a hope for restoration? I do, because the Word gave us the promise. But now, that hope is not enough. That hope gives you a vision. It gives you the future. But faith is what gives it substance. It's what draws the future into your now. Say that faith is what draws my future into now. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things will be added to you. That is His promise. What does it mean to seek first the kingdom of God? There's things that can be added to us, but there's a priority. What are the first things? In volume two of this series, Alan Bagg takes us to powerful, deep levels found in God's Word to not only seek God's kingdom first, but practically how to place God first with our words and our actions. Not only did He pay for your salvation in full, He's also paid for your healing, your deliverance, your provision, your protection, everything you could want, need, or desire. He's blessed you with every spiritual blessing. He's given you all things pertaining to life and godliness. So how do I see it manifesting in my life? He shares about powerful principles God has put in place and the success we can experience in our lives when putting these principles into practice. I really believe that if we're going to talk about having a relationship with God, it means that He comes first in our life. Discover the benefits of being part of the household of faith. Order your series by visiting us online at allenbackministries.org or by making contact with us here at any of our details. Wow, family, wasn't that powerful? This series really is filled with principles that we can apply to our lives. And I really want to encourage you to get your hands on a copy. You can contact us at the details below and place your order and continue studying Kingdom First. If you haven't yet accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your first step to see this kingdom operating in your life is accepting Him as your Lord and Savior. I'd love to give you the opportunity to pray this with us. So let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son, Jesus. Jesus, I believe you died and rose again. I ask you to come into my heart. You are now my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen and congratulations. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the Kingdom of God. I'm so excited that you made this choice. If you prayed that prayer with us, please won't you contact us at the details below. We'd love to hear from you. There's a free gift that my dad would like to get into your hands. It's some tools to help you on this journey that you've just entered. So contact us today. Well, family, that's all we have time for today. Join us again tomorrow as we continue to study Kingdom First. My name is Brittany, reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Life is a choice. Choose life. At allenbagministries.org, you can find out more about Alan Bag, the call of God on his life, and more about who we are as a ministry. On our website, you will also be able to connect with us by making use of our contact details. You will also find out about the heartbeat of Alan Bag Ministries and how you can know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Hello, my friend. My name is Alan Bag, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. On our website, you will be able to watch our current television programs as well as catch up on any previously broadcast programs you may have missed. 
you will also be able to find the platforms we are broadcasting on as well as join us for our live streamed services at the Bay Christian Family Church over the weekends and special occasions. At allenbagministries.org, we will help you to connect with Alan Bag when he ministers in your area. So keep a close eye on his itinerary for up and coming events in your area. If you would like to get hold of some resources taught by Alan Bag, browse our online shop for some faith building material that will help you further your knowledge on the many topics available. On occasion, there are also some great promotions and free study programs available. On our website, you can find out how to get involved as a partner or even find out more information about partnering with Allen Bag Ministries. You can also make use of our easy-to-use giving facilities on our website and get involved in the many projects and ways available. Through the grace of God, Allen Bag Ministries help many to get through the challenges they face on a daily basis. And our heart is to help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org and let us help you identify and succeed in what the Lord has called you to do. Allen Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details.